Hello, I am Get Good Fox, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Mazara Farm, one of the many Stave Decay 2 base locations, and what I'm going to do is tell you the upsides and downsides of the base so that you can decide ahead of time whether or not you want to move in. In the previous episode, I reviewed the Country Church, and I've also reviewed every single base location in Cascade Hills, aka the Foothills, so check those out if you're interested in those locations as well. But let's get started with the Mazara Farm review, and I want to kind of preface this with this idea that the farm is very balanced, and what I mean by that is for every good thing about the farm, there also seems to be a bad thing that holds it back, which is interesting. Anyways, though, let's begin with the location. As you can see, I'm currently in the country church, and I'm going to move into the Mazara farm. This location is very much off the grid, and what I mean by that is it is too far away from any scouting tower for you to climb up and reveal it, meaning you will need to approach it manually by foot or by car. So take note of where it's located on the map so you can find it if you do want to come here. The central location of the Mazara farm is definitely an advantage, but it's held back by the fact that it's not located in a town center, meaning that there aren't a lot of really close by areas to loot. If it were located in a town, you'd have many, many buildings to go through. But on the other hand, because it's located in the middle of the map, it means any mission you need to run that's randomly generated or any time you have supplies to bring back to the base, being in the middle of the map means that the distance is approximately equal from anywhere you could be. Anyways, let's actually get to the physical location of the base. The Mazara farm immediately gave me a bit of a State of Decay 1 vibe because it's basically a home with a security fence around it. The building is a bit compact, its footprint is really tight, so it can be a little bit cramped at times. And in order to move in here, you're going to need to have at least five people in your community and you're going to have to pay 1,000 influence. In addition to getting this base though, it does come with a unique feature specific to this base called fertile soil, and what this will do is increase any crops grown by 30%. And of course, as soon as I move in, the zombies prepare to send an attack wave, so it's time to see how the Mazara farm holds up. There is no built-in watchtower at this location, but there is this convenient grain silo that I think is supposed to be cosmetic, but you can climb up it and you can pick zombies off because the terrain is pretty flat in Mayor Valley. Otherwise, you're just going to duke it out in the courtyard because of how cramped it is. Enough of these shenanigans though, let's get into the facility review. And this is what you're gonna be looking at as soon as you purchase the Mazara Farm. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that there are no facilities to tear down. Every slot is either open and available for customization or is a permanent built-in, which means we can never tear it down. Because there are more built-ins than normal, it does bring into the question, are these gonna be awkward built-ins that actually take away from the base or are they going to be advantageous bonuses? Well, let's find out, shall we? And bear in mind, I did mention that for every good thing this base has, it also has something working against it. Anyways, let's begin with the open customizable facilities. We've got two large open facilities outside, and then we've got three small customizable facilities, two of them outside, one of them inside. The large presence of outside locations is advantageous because you can put more farms or gardens there to take advantage of the fertile soil effect. And it's also really nice to have two large facilities so early in the game, especially when all the bases in Cascade Hills only featured two bases with two large facilities. And I also kind of like the shape of the building. It kind of reminds me of a Tetris block or Teen Titans Headquarters, Titans Tower. It's a lot of T's. Anyways, let's talk about the built-in locations that are permanent, of which we have five. Two of them are the command center and the storeroom. They are in every single base, so that's standard. But what about the others? In the middle of the base, we have our built-in level 2 kitchen. Normally, it would have a one-a-day material cost, but because it's built-in, that is waived. However, if you don't have a cook to take advantage of the kitchen, it's basically a waste. Upstairs, we've got a bedroom which supplies your community with four beds, which is actually equivalent to the large facility bedroom that you could build yourself. So in some ways, you could argue this actually has three large facilities, just one of them has to be a bedroom. Then down below, we have a well. The well is really annoying for me because I have permanent water and power due to beating the game with the builder and I have the Builder Boon Legacy active. So the well 
is useless for me, and if you're going for the same perk, it'll be useless for you, too. What it will do, though, is you can activate it to supply your base with water, so it could be useful if you are early in your gameplay of Stage Decay 2. Now then, let's see my revision to the base, and let me show you what you can do to some of these facilities to make them more useful, because survival games aren't about having everything you want, it's about working with what you have and improvising with things. So let's start with some of the things that you can do to make these existing built-ins more useful, starting with the well. The well, no matter what, even if you have the base-wide power and water perk, you can always activate it, just turn on the water some more, and what that'll do is level up anyone who has utilities or an advanced utilities skill like electrician or plumbing. You can also use the mod slot to add in something like the Independence DLC workstation. The workstation lets you craft ammunition and deployables, and it doesn't matter what facility it's plugged into, so put it in one of these less important facilities like the well. As for the bedroom, I typically do not like to build beds inside my base. I prefer to use outposts instead, but since we do have it, we may as well install the very powerful white noise machine, which gives a really big morale bonus to everyone in your community, but it can only be installed in bedroom locations, which I normally don't have. And now it's time to look at the facilities that I chose to build, and this is where the annoyance of the base begins to manifest itself. As you know, I like to put a lounge in one of the large facility options, and I can't do that in this base. The reason is because there's only three small facility locations, and one of them has to be a workshop. If you don't have a workshop, you can't repair or salvage weapons. Another small facility has got to be an infirmary, because you cannot recover from injuries very easily without it, and there's no built-in watchtower, so the last one has to be a watchtower. So over here we have our level 2 watchtower, which allows us to reduce our zombie threat, but more importantly, your community will bitch and moan if you do not have a watchtower built. As a consequence of the base's setup, Process of elimination has forced me to use the two large facilities as farms. One of the farms is growing food, the other farm is growing medicine. If any one of these three built-ins that were not necessary, the bedroom, the kitchen, or the well, was another open small facility, I could add in one hydroponics facility and that would free up one of those large facilities for the lounge. But no, this is what we are stuck with. No lounge. No massive morale bonus, no OG Xbox, no 1v1 Blood Gulch action. Anyways, I did not forget about the soil bonus that the base has, and this is what I'll explain next. So, what I did was compare the level 2 farm, because you won't be able to get level 3 without the correct leader type, versus the hydroponics facility, and I found that they have the same output. With the best mods installed, they both had an output of 9.9 .9 units of crop for either food or medicine if available. I have no idea what that means. I, I know what 9.9 .9 means in terms of like decimals, you know, 9 and 9 tenths of food, but I have no idea how the game regards 9 tenths of a unit of food. At any rate, that is what it does. So let's wrap this thing up. How good is the Mazara farm? Well, since I can't fit in my lounge, it's terrible. Burn it! It sucks! In all seriousness, though, it is a pretty average base. You would think that having the two large facilities would be super good in a small base like this, but the thing is, you're not going to be able to cram in those awesome facilities that you're imagining without also losing the sustainability of the base. So it's an example of how, in a survival game, you're never allowed to really have your cake and eat it too. Undead Labs is giving with one hand and they are taking with the other. But that's that. Like this video if it helped you decide to move into the Mazara farm or maybe to skip it over. Subscribe for more State of Decay 2 content and remember that you don't have to be good to get good.